What is up guys, Farmer Taiki here and in this video I want to go over how to distinguish good farms from bad farms. If you like the content, please like and subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section below. None of this is financial advice. Okay, so let's get started. I know that there's a lot of hype around the Polygon network and there's a lot of money flowing into the space and if you're watching my channel you're probably interested in yield farming. And you know, it might seem like easy money at first you know, if you watch my videos, but you know, just a fair warning to everyone that, you know, crypto is a zero sum game. For every winner, there is a loser. And let's first understand like how uh, yield farms work as there's like a new one popping up every single day. Um, I'm just gonna go over like how, how the developers make money uh, because that'll give you like a better understanding of, you know, what's in it for the devs, right? Like who, what's in it for the people that actually make these things. So first of all, I'm gonna go over a good farm. That is Polywheel. This was the very first yield farm launched on the Polygon network. At its peak, uh, their TVL was roughly $200 million. It's gone down a little bit. Um, I mean, it's still the largest, right? Even though the price of the Krill token has gone absolutely uh, zero, like, <laughs> has done this. Um, I got in, this, this was my very first yield farm, so this is how I got a taste of what yield farming is. And I kind of learned, um, you know, through all the price volatility, like how yield farms work and whatnot. And you know this was actually a pretty sustain, uh, pretty sustainable farm. And um, I guess one way, like one data point, I guess, uh, to see uh, if the developers are actually working on this product is like checking their medium. Um, obviously, you know their medium. Just just because a project has a medium doesn't mean that you know it's going to be a good farm or it's a good project in general. But you know it's it's a sign that the developers are actually putting time into this project, right? So let's go over like the tokenomics of like how these people make money. Okay, so all farms roughly take a 4% uh, deposit fee, right? Uh, when you stake your assets into these farms. 3% for Polywell, 3% is gonna be used to purchase Krill, which is our farming token. All right, so this is the buyback mechanism that I keep talking about. So as more and more people deposit, the, there's like a constant buying pressure on the price of the token so you can uh, you know, sell it and buy something that you actually want. And 1% of the 4% is gonna be used to further develop this pro platform with other sites. This is always like the iffy one because like, all these farms are going to have like a part of those deposit fees is going to go to the devs and the devs will claim that they're using it for marketing, they're using it to hire more people, etc. In the case of Polywell, they're actually developing. Uh, if you check their Twitter, uh, they have over 8,000 followers, I believe. Yeah, 8,000 followers. And you know they're constantly shipping products. Like recently they launched this yield aggregator. I think it's under Reefs. Yeah, like this LP yield aggregator. You know, and... They've been on a few podcasts, the developers are, you know, they, they are shipping products. Like I'm sure, yes, the developers are making money uh, from this project, but you know, that's the incentive, right? Like they're building this product because they do make money, but you know, if, but they are making like a good product that, you know, both the user and the developers are, are benefiting off of. Okay, so, you know, that's why even though the rates are not that high, uh, there is still a lot of money on the platform because people know it's safe and you know, it's reliable and the devs are working on it. Okay, so, that's this is an example of a good farm. Uh, it was it was an amazing farm, right? Like imagine you were farming the krill token here, right? Like you would have made so much money. And if you're getting it now, like obviously you might not make your money back, but you know it's an example of a team that's actually working. And you know the some of the money that you're paying them is actually being reinvested into the product. But recently, there's been so many farms that's popping up, and I, I guess like with with anything, like the first project does well. And then the developers that you know can code, can make these projects, will look at Polywheel and be like, huh, I can make my own Polywheel, but I don't want to build out these products. I just want to create create an application that lasts like three to five days, and I just want to walk away with profits. And that's what's kind of been happening with these new farms. Like there's been like a there's been like a few farms popping up every single day, and the quality of them have been really awful. Uh, I mean, not awful, but like not as good as like like last week or two weeks ago. So that's that. That's like the reason. Like I haven't been farming that much, um, and it's okay. Like if because it's all about risk reward, right? Like so, if you're looking into yield farming and there's like a period of like a week where you don't really see a good yield farm, it's okay to not you know put your money in it. Like, it's okay. You can just put it into Ave and earn some like great fees or put it on the curve. So I wanna go over two bad farms that uh, I've encountered. Uh, one uh, one example goes over like where the developer soft rugged a project, and the second one is a live project that I think is a pure scam. So Polypunk is an example of a project that's soft rugged. So if you look at their Discord, they're saying, oh yeah, like the developers they deleted their Telegram. Everyone's like, oh yeah, it's it's dead, huh? 
<laughs> now everyone's asking if they rugged. Uh, so I want to just go over like the definitions of uh, like rugs. So there's one type of rug, which is called a hard rug. A hard rug is when the developer just totally runs away with your money. So let's say you deposit $10,000 into a farm. The developer just you know, takes those funds and runs away with them. Uh, this is the biggest risk when it comes to uh, farms, like the hard rug. So like that's how I use the rug doctor farm list to make sure that I don't get hard rugged. Uh, so what the devs did for Polypunk is a soft rug. A soft rug is when the developer just disappears, right? They just stop working on the project. They collect some deposit fees, they pocket it, and they just run away with the project. And I mean, the reason is, like, I knew about the risks, right? Like, and I wasn't a fan of their tokenomics, but I still entered this form because their TVL was low and I thought I could make my deposit fee back, which I did. I, I made like like two, three hundred dollars off of this, which isn't great, but uh, given the risks, uh, maybe I should not have taken it, right? I'm just being transparent. And the reason I wasn't a fan of their tokenomics was, you know, let's actually look into uh, how the developers make money. In the case of Polywhale, um, in the case of Polywhale, three percent was used to purchase Krill, one percent to uh, develop the the application. But in the case of Polypunk, twenty five percent of the four percent went to the devs, right? Okay. Uh, only only 25% went to buy back and burns. In the case of Polywheel, 3% went to it, but in the case of Polypunk, only 1% went to it. And 50% went to funding game platform winnings, like whatever that means, where 50% was used to buy back and burn, 25% went to the devs, and 25% stayed in the platform. But obviously, they never launched this game platform, right? They just like left the project. So uh, in actuality, 25% went to the devs, and 50% also went to the devs, right? And there's this galong gone. And who knows, like, and you should you should be aware that like because these anonymous these developers are anonymous, there's nothing stopping the polypunk devs, right? Where is polypunk here? Oh, yeah, there's nothing stopping the polypunk devs from creating a new yield form next week with a different name and calling it like polycat, not not, not polycat, you know, like a poly coffee or something, and like creating like paying a web developer to make their website look all nice and just like, pipe, like hyping it up with like deflationary and like experienced developers like all those buzzwords that is full of bs uh, so always be careful um, because the incremental cost to create a new form is like essentially zero right that that's why these developers are just forking the same product over and over again uh, and over time it's inevitable that these farms just go to shit okay so the last example I want to go over is poly line because this thing has been shilled in my YouTube comment section and I'm like, okay, let's look into it, right? And the homepage has the first automatic liquidity yield farm on the Polygon network, safe moon like mechanism. This should, this should raise some red flags, right? Like the developers are trying to pump their coin by saying, yeah, like you should yield farm on our product on our application because we have a safe moon like mechanism. And what did safe moon do? It mooned, right? It pumped. So you should put your money into Polyline. So, and I mean, their website looks good. Like oh, this line looks cool. And like, they have all these features that like I, I, I know nothing about. So let's dig into what are these features and how do their tokenomics work? And more importantly, how do the devs get paid? So the lion token can be seen here where uh, they have the tax and then 60 line per block, right? For other product projects, like one uh, one coin per block. But this one is minting 60 a block, right? They changed it from 90. They crossed it out. Uh, they could have just deleted it. I don't know why they just, <laughs> they didn't replace this, but you know, 60 line. And it'll be reduced to 75 and then 50 and so on when TVL is big enough, right? They're not going to tell you like what the threshold is. Like whenever the developers feel like lowering the mission rates, they're going to do so. But you know, when TVL is big enough, like right? whatever, when TVL is big enough, we'll lower the emission rates. So 60 line per block, which is roughly 2.6 million line tokens minted every single day, right? This is an infinite supply, infinite supply curve, right? And out of the 2.6 million tokens minted a day, 9% goes to the devs to ensure essential growth of the project, right? It's essential. It's truly, truly essential, right? Like they're not trying to scam you. There's this like, you know, they, they need to, uh, reinvest into the platform. So let's look at, uh, let's dig deeper into the deposit fee, right? So the 4% deposit fee that we all know and love. Okay, so 2% of the deposit fee is gonna be sent to the devs, right? Like they have to reinvest, you know, they have to pay themselves, etc. And the other 2% is gonna go to uh, mountain farming and redistribute it to line holders. 
So what is mountain farming? Okay, let's go to the homepage, right? And click the mountain section. All right, stake line to earn new tokens. New tokens, cool. How do I apply? This button's fucking broken, man. This button is fucking broken. You can't even use this thing, right? Literally, 2% goes back to the devs and 2% goes to a broken feature. Oh, they actually explain what mountain farming is. Let's look at it. Okay, they, you can stake your line to earn other tokens, which will be created by the dev team 21 to 28 days after launch. Like, do, do you actually think this thing is gonna be launched? Like, no way, like th this is not gonna be a thing. Mountain farming is not gonna be a thing. So if you think about it, you know, 4% deposit fee, 2% goes to the devs, and the other 2% also goes to the devs. So, uh, you know, they're throwing away, they're, they're throwing around all these buzzwords, convincing you that this token is gonna pump, but if you read the fine print, you know, 4%, like all the fees are just gonna go to the devs, and 9% of all the tokens minted also go to the devs. So they're just giving themselves tokens to dump on your ass that are ignorant, right? Like, this is the price you pay for being ignorant. This is the price you pay for not reading the documentation. Like, I can't really hate on these guys because they're like, they're being really transparent and public about how they're scamming their users. So if you're ignorant and like, if you like openly get scammed, like, like who do you blame? Like, do you blame the developers? Do you blame yourself? It's probably a combination of the two, right? Like, you can't just blame... I mean, you could blame them. You you could blame the devs because this is a kind of BS. But you know, we can also argue like they're community driven. Like they're gonna launch a DAO two months after launch. We all know that this is not gonna launch. Uh, the developers are gonna leave at some point, and this is all just like mumbo jumbo. Um, and also like, whenever I talk about like a token going to zero, farm tokens going to zero, I receive in the comment section that like, well, no, but this product, like they have a roadmap. Like next month, they're gonna launch this. In two months, they're gonna launch this. They're gonna be deflationary. They're gonna burn tokens. But let's be real here. Like developers, they're not working on this. Like they are not working on this, right? Like what are these things? Binary options, fixed rate swap, margin trading, analytics, API, IFO, airdrop, trading, mining, DEX. Like they're not working on this, right? At some point, they're gonna be like, oh, sorry, like the developers left. I'm sorry. And they're just gonna like run away. And chances are two weeks from now, they're gonna be a new farm called like poly, I don't know, poly, poly elephant or something, which is gonna have the same exact buzzwords. They're gonna scam the same people with like random like things, like random features. They're gonna keep hyping it up. And you, you have to be careful about this kind of stuff, right? Because all you have to do, uh, cause I'm sure there's some people watching my channel and my discord that's lost money on this. If you just spent 10 minutes reading 10 minutes reading, like you could have avoided it. And I get it, I don't like reading, right? Like in high school and college, I didn't like re really read those textbooks. I read like cliff notes and whatnot. But when you're managing your own money, maybe you should spend 10 minutes reading. And that's the alpha right there. Read, spend 10 minutes to read. All right, so I hope this, <laughs> this uh, shed some light on like differences between good forms and bad forms. Uh, I guess like the the real alpha is like understanding like the the meta like the game theory behind all this is that like you know, chances are the same developers are just making the same farms uh, with different UI different names and even though the first form might be good like Polyville was a good one and the first form will be good the tenth form will be worse the fiftieth form will be like really bad and the hundred the hundred form might be a scam. That's not to say that all these new forms are bad, right? If you just spent like 10 minutes per project reading up on like the tokenomics and like maybe joining their telegram to see how active it is, if the developers are like really engaging with the community, those farms are more likely to, more likely to thrive than something like Polyline where tokens are being minted to their pockets and all the deposit fee goes to their pockets as well. If you like the content, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below. Have fun farming and please be safe out there.